Now today I'm gonna somewhat go back in time and be an 11 year old <laughs> or 11 ish year old. You know, I was into all these uh, strange projects. I was into Amiga and you know, music making and all this stuff. This very same kit I saw in Maplin, in the Maplin catalog, and I always wanted it, but of course, you know, being that age, I, you know, no one bought me it and <laughs> I couldn't like save up to get it. Now, miraculously, I came across this again. I'm not sure if this is, you know, from back then. Someone saved it or something like this, or they're still making these again. I have no idea. Uh, judging by the box of this, the artwork, the font and everything, it looks like it's been, it's been teleported from the 90s. So I'm guessing there's still some kits left and someone's just selling them. PCBWay have now become a one-stop solution. Other than doing high-quality PCB boards, they now do CNC services as well as 3D printing. If, like myself, you're into doing electronics projects and require PCBs, then do check out their services on their website. Back then, I was always like fascinated by solar cells and solar, you know, energy and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, I wanted to see what this is about. Now I get my chance. <laughs> so I'm just gonna chill out here and just mess around with this and put this together. Mess around with solar cells. Why not? <laughs> it's the exact same one. <laughs> the map is literally is the exact same one. It's the first time I've seen it in the flesh. I've only seen like um, pictures of it or images of it. Is this pre-made? I thought you had to actually make it. Because the cells come and you have to kind of configure them like this. But this looks like it's already been done. I really could have done with this when I was like 11 or something. No, it's not, it's not pre-made. I don't think so anyway. Yeah, you have to kind of, yeah, so it's these cells and you have to configure them in this, in this way. So let's take them out. I remember from Mapland I bought one of these cells. I have it somewhere, I'm not sure exactly where, but I have it somewhere. Maybe if I find it, I'll just join it under this. <laughs> Solar energy, harness the power of the sun. Let's see if it's got any dead or anything on it. Must have some copyright thing on it. Okay, that's good. Sort of tells you here different ways to configure this. Configure the cells themselves here. As you can see here, there's different configurations. Ah, okay, so different voltages, different current ratings. 1.6 volts, 200 milliamps. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we have to use the cute little wrenches. They're actually kind of adorable. Pretty sure in my school as far as I know. In my year I was the only weird one who kind of like looked at Maplin catalogs in her spare time. <laughs> but then again, I mean those of us who do this kind of thing, I'm pretty sure no one else knew that I used to do this. So I'm sure that the others who did this used to hide it themselves. It would have been cool to meet someone back then to mess around with with this kind of stuff. I mean, if I didn't advertise it, so how are they supposed to know? But then again, when you do advertise something like this in, in school, you tend to become a target. That's the part about school that sucks. Actually, it's the part about society that kind of sucks. <laughs> when you're like, you're into this kind of thing, I don't know why. You seem to be like the status of uncool. Not that I value that. I used to, don't get me wrong. I used to value that. I'm sure many of us did, but eventually you just stop. I personally think nerds are cool. If anyone calls me a nerd, it's a compliment. Because it's the nerds, the design, all the computers, all the phones, all this that make the whole world go around. Well, today's world go around. Very thankful to the original Amiga team for creating the Amiga. 
as you can see, each of these solar cells, solar, as you can see, each of these solar cells has a polarity. It's negative, and that's positive. So you gotta be careful with this. Actually, that's good thinking. You can see the polarity through these circles here. things. I think there's some more here. I gotta cut it done with this back then. Just to mess around with it. There's something really cute about it. Even though I found it cute back then. I mean I found it cute with the fact that this mortar had mortar written on it. <laughs> Solar mortar. Like there's any difference. <laughs> Our solar panel here wired up well not wired up but put together just need to wire it up now so I'm figuring thing goes in here and just twists and like that so you have this here <laughs> it's kind of cute I won't lie the solar mortar <laughs> that goes through here I don't know why this is making me laugh. I'm just finding it really cute. <laughs> it's just there's something a bit adorable about it. <laughs> okay, so let's. No, I don't want the solar mortar freaking sticker to come off. Darn it! It started tearing. Darn it! No. Mortar attached, wobbling around. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. It comes with a stand. So you can have the, um, the solar cell separate from the, the mortar. And then just like you hang the solar cell up and have the mortar on top of it. <laughs> it's kind of cute. I like this. <laughs> As in, you can just like... Do that. <laughs> this is cute. <laughs> just making me giggle. It's just adorable. That's why. Anyway, let's um put this on first. Actually, it could be a wind turbine, even. Let's connect this up and see what happens. I don't know. Will it work? I mean, there's no sunshine here, so if this needs sun energy, then it's not gonna work because it's freaking like. It was at seven o'clock in the evening in winter. It's <laughs> so, like black, black, I mean dark outside. <laughs> Maybe it's not enough light. Oh, that's a shame. Well, we have um, this crazy freaking torch, which is like, um, you know, you're not supposed to even look into it. It's so bright. Oh, actually, you know, it worked kind of ish. You can see it sort of trying. Not this is not just wanting sunlight, because this is stupidly bright. 
is a positive, negative, positive, negative. Yep, that's good. And at the top is, yeah, negative, positive, negative, positive. That's fine. The configuration is good. So why aren't you working? Let's check the, um, let's get a bit grown up and check the voltage. <laughs> Cannot be 11 years old for too long. Hey, it's giving off like 1.3 volts. 1.5 volts. I mean, the normal room light is giving on no point three volts. Let's call it. So let's try like the motor on a normal 1.5 volt battery and see what it does. It might be enough voltage, but maybe not enough oomph. There's enough current. Well, that works on 1.2 volts because these um. Rechargeable batteries are 1.2, so it should really be working. Oh, there you go, it's starting to work now. And quite well. Why all of a sudden? And why did it just stop? It needs a freak lot of light, though. Actually, that's quite a significant amount of power. So it's working really well. Maybe the motor was just like a little... Unless there's a loose connection here. It's the only thing I can think of. Okay, so I've tightened every... Every nut there. Should be fine. Shouldn't be an issue with conne connection at all. motor needs a bit of a, a kickstart. You know what I'm thinking? Should we put a capacitor on this? Ow, my brain. <laughs> Should we put a capacitor on this? Okay, so I've got a 47 microfarad here. What I'll do is I will put some alligator clips on this. You want Neelix is ready for his food, so... I'm gonna feed him up here so that he can chill with us as well. Here we go, sweetheart. Oops. <laughs> He's waiting for me to sit down. <laughs> Bless him. Let's put the alligator clips or crocodile clips, whatever you call them, in here. Let's try this. I think it's to do with the mortar that you need some stuff. You need some thingy to start it up. Let's connect the capacitor to it and see what happens. Doesn't make any difference at all. That's spinning faster. No way. Wow. Very impressed by that. Adding a capacitor makes a huge difference. So clearly the mortar's taking the voltage, but it's really going fast. <clears throat> okay, that's one volt coming from there. The capacitor has actually made a huge difference. Should we put a bigger capacitor on and see what happens? So that was um, 47 microfarads. Let's try 300 and... Sorry, 220 microfarads. And see what happens. This is the multimeter. Okay, so with 220 microfarads. Pretty fast. I want to see if the capacitor is actually making a difference or if it's just me imagining it. Actually, yes, it is. 
and sometimes it's hard to start it up. Just put the capacitor on again. Okay, 220 microfarad. Definitely, it's making a huge difference. So there you go, if you're doing projects with uh, solar power, add a capacitor on it. Okay, I'm gonna try something. That is, do solar cells, you know, react to this, um, the black light, the UVA bulbs? I guess not. <laughs> Doesn't even do anything for it. Yes, yeah, so ultraviolet, no. What about infrared? It's like on off, on off, on off, on off. <laughs> it's like an SOS light. Morse code SOS. You know something? I've got an idea. Let's try something. Connect another component to it. Okay, so we have a little piezo buzzer here, or a little piezo sounder. Let's see what happens with this. I'll have to disconnect the motor because it's going to take most of the power, of course. Okay, so first, let's disconnect it from the meter and the capacitor. It's just straight from the solar panel. It's kind of... Okay, let's try something here. Okay, so let's put the flashlight or the torch on the SOS thing and see what happens. <laughs> That's fantastic! There you go, that's an SOS Morse code. Because <laughs> let's connect a capacitor to it this time. Yeah, that's literally all there is. It's just the capacitor and the meter connected to it. You can see it smooths, it's more smoother. As in the sound is more smoother when it goes off. The difference when I connect the capacitor. Okay, let's go a whole freaking hog and connect a huge capacitor to it then. 4,700 4, microfarads. I don't know, I'm just having a lot of fun. Even though it's like simple stuff, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. This is exactly how I would have been messing with this back um, back in the day when I was like 11 or something. <laughs> just, I just feel like an 11 year old again. <laughs> Goofing around with stupid things like this. This is how I got into electronics. Oh, did you see that? Just one. That's charging that capacitor, that 4,700 4, 4, microfarads. So this, even though it's it's doing really well for the solar the solar panel, if there's like a, a let's put it on the SOS distress signal, right? It'd be completely useless for this because it'd be too much of a big power reservoir. Look at the voltage! 1.7 volts! It actually increases the voltage! And let's put our friend motor back on. Yeah? And see what this big capacitor does to this motor. It's fast now. But it's connected to this capacitor. That's going pretty fast. And the reason why the voltage is there. Actually, let's you know something? Let's do it on the meter first. Let's disconnect the um, the motor. Okay, so let's test it on the meter without the capacitor. Almost two volts. 1.8 volts. The amount of energy that's used by this freaking torch to create this. <laughs> Just, I know, but we're having fun here, yeah. So let's connect it to this. The capacitor. See what happens here. 
Okay, so basically what I think is happening here, the village is pretty much the same, but what the capacitor is doing is it's storing all that current, all that power. And it's just like oomphing it out to that as more current, you know, it just it's giving it more current. Basically, it's storing the power from the solar cells, solar power, ta da da it's, <laughs> it's storing the power from the solar panel and, you know, providing the motor with more current. It's giving it like, you know, it's like filling a bucket up with water and then just like splashing it on. <laughs> so, <laughs> splashing it on the motor instead of it just trickling to the motor from the solar panel. Basically, that's how it's what's happening here. First without the capacitor. Yay! There you go. Let's put a capacitor on it. Oh, I like that. It's got a smooth, it's like it charges the capacitor first before it goes on. Smooth on, smooth off. I feel like watching Karate Kid now. <laughs> Let's try green one. I don't know why I'm doing this, I'm just... Okay, so the torch here is not even on. But what's actually kind of cool is, you know, it's still kind of picking up the, the small voltage. Oh, something's a bit... I think something's a little bit loose here. It goes down. So it's very sensitive. Now obviously if I shine the torch at it... You see it click, it's like slamming against the end. Now something which I didn't know until recent times is if you connect an LED to the vault the DC voltage, correct polarity of course, is that LEDs are kind of like solar panels. This is just me shining light into an LED. So it sort of works like a solar panel itself. Now, that's giving off quite a bit of voltage though. 1.5 volts. Wow. Now let's try something. Let's try it on this dude here. And see what Mr. LED can do for us. Now what's probably happening here is that because of the single freaking LED, it's giving off voltage. The current is probably like so stupidly low <laughs> that it's not doing much. So let's um, let's try blue one since they're high current. This even makes a difference if it works this way or not. Yeah, when the moment I connected to this, the uh, motor, the voltage just diminishes. Yeah, because look, that's oh uh, the blue one's giving off two volts. <laughs> okay, let's try something here. All right. Let's see if we can breadboard. Okay, let's get all the blue LEDs. Okay, so what I've done here is I've got one cluster of, actually two clusters of uh, six LEDs and I've paralleled all these. I paralleled one cluster of six, paralleled the other cluster of six, and then, you know, a separate cluster series them together. So, you know, you get double the voltage and, you know, they current as well. If we were to actually connect this to a multimeter, you can see here that uh, of course I'm lighting the torch. You can see here that it's like 3.4 volts. 3.5 volts. Oh, 3.6 if you want then. <laughs> so 3.6 volts here. And let's connect it here to a red LED. You can see that tiny bit of red. Let's get another LED. And you can see over here that it's like barely lighting up. You can see that little red part. I'm gonna move it away from, you know, you can see it turn thingy. So it's, it's just about working. What's up, sweetheart? It's too much current droid requires. So you can see, you know, I mean, LED does work. We prove, you know, there's a proof of concept. They cannot provide enough current. I mean, that's like six, well, 12 LEDs acting as a solar cell. But yeah, we have a proof of concept at least that you know LEDs do create some sort of 
you know, voltage current and it can act as a really, really inefficient solar cell. And of course, I've had a lot of fun with this kit here. Just, this is how I used to mess around when I was little. Just like find some components and like spend hours and hours just messing around with just like odd components here and there. And you, you learn things. You, know, you learn a lot of things. And this is basically how I learn. You know, I just mess around with components and that, that's what I did throughout my childhood. Like this bucket of components and I used to just like take them out and just mess around with them for like hours on end. And you know do the most stupid thing. <laughs> I mean, I remember once what I tried to do was, um, was to get a little speaker, like a little transducer speaker, and um, tape head, <laughs> put it in series, and put a battery on it. <laughs> and think, I used to think that, oh, maybe if I have a cassette tape and do that, it'll, you know, come through the speaker. <laughs> you know, stupid things like that. I did stuff like that when I was like, you know, seven or eight or years old. Anyway, so that is all for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed just chilling with me and messing around with the little spanner. <laughs> just messing around with all this stuff, you know. I may actually do more with other things. Um, and what's up, sweetheart? You just have to say adios. <laughs> anyway. Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, Neelix and I will say adios. Thanks so much to all my patrons for supporting my channel. Especially to you very kind top tier supporters of mine who deserve an extra special thanks. Rich Garbett, Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, and Chris Sebelinski. Have a lovely evening everyone. Until next time, adios!